Why did you open up the border? Why did you create this catastrophe? People have lost their loved ones because of this catastrophe, this open border policy. Do you, do you have any remorse? All of our hearts break for the victims of these heinous crimes and their loved ones. Secondly, the criminals who committed those crimes are responsible for their criminal conduct. Do, do you ever call up the families of the crime victims? Have you ever talked to Lake and Riley's family? All of our hearts break for the loved ones of those who have been lost at the hands of criminal conduct. That was Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson grilling Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas yesterday during a Senate Homeland Security hearing. Mayorkas was testifying on Capitol Hill just a day after Senate Democrats completely dismissed his impeachment trial, even before it would begin. Joining me now is the man himself, Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson, a member of the Senate Homeland Security Budget and Finance Committees. Senator, why wasn't uh, Alejandro Mayorkas impeached for a dereliction of duty? Well, good morning, Maria. Because Democrats want to sweep their open border policy and the dire consequences of it uh, under the rug. They just don't want to talk about it. Uh, I'm sure they're dismayed that the, their uh, lapdogs in the, in the mainstream media are actually covering the open border to a certain extent. And so it's somewhat of a political liability, but not enough political liability for them to actually to want to secure the border. But let me tell you, it was infuriating to have Mayorkas testify before our committee. There, he might as well have been an automaton or a trained parrot. Now, I asked him, you know, it's undeniable that uh, he and President Biden and Democrats in Congress want an open border, that they caused this problem. And I just asked him, why did you do it? You know, why do you want an open border? You know, do, do you have any regrets? Do you feel any remorse? I mean, he's obviously complicit. He's aided and abetted these, you know, hundreds of crimes, horrific murders and rapes uh, that have occurred under his watch. Uh, and he, just, he shows no remorse, no, no regrets whatsoever. So why did he do it then, Senator? What do you think? Is it because of the census? Why did he do it? Why is the open border continuing three years later after murder, robbery, attacks, you name it, uh, migrant crime across the country? Why is the border still open? Why? Why? That's the only explanation. Democrats want people coming into this country that will support them in the future, whether just getting counted in the census so to get more wow. Democrat members of Congress in, in those blue states, or eventually to vote. You know, you have NGOs, non-government organizations, giving these immigrants, bef before they come to this country, a piece of paper saying, remember to vote for Joe Biden when you get into the U.S. I mean, we have that documented proof now. They're telling these people yeah. that they are human trafficking in this country to vote for Joe Biden. I think mean, it's pretty obvious why Democrats are doing this. It's, it's yeah, sick. I just saw that myself. You're right. I just saw that myself um, on the um, on, on paraphernalia. I was looking at at the immigration website and and, and papers that they're giving to uh, to, to uh, immigrants coming in. Don't forget to vote for Joe Biden. I thought illegals are not allowed to vote. Well, that's why Democrats support mail-in balloting. While they want absentee balloting, while they're relaxing all the controls. Remember, the Baker Carter Commission, bipartisan commission, said that absentee balloting represents the greatest threat for potential fraud. And so that's what Democrats want absentee balloting, is, is again, they're relaxing all the controls. Even worse would be mail in balloting. So, I mean, unfortunately, that, that's our election system right now. That's just incredible. I want to get your take uh, on the issue of the morning because I'm wondering how you feel about. The safety of America right now in the homeland. Israel has fired a reta retaliatory strike against Iran. This happened last night. Of course, tomorrow the House will consider foreign aid bills, voting on $60 billion for Ukraine, $26 billion for Israel, $8 billion for the Indo Pacific region. But a new Daily Signal poll finds 47 percent of voters are against the Ukraine bill, 17 percent of Republicans support it, 50 percent of voters are against the Israel bill, 32 percent of Republicans support that senator. So what does this all look like when it gets to the Senate? And does the money to Israel become that much more critical after this strike last night? Well, I think the support for Israel does. I mean, the war in the Middle East right now is completely different from the war in Ukraine. I, I think it's just bizarre, these two exchanges. Uh, Iran telegraphs that they're going to send, you know, relatively low-tech, low-cost drones and—, and missiles at Israel, uh, tips everybody off so we could be responding, responding with very expensive 
Iron Dome missiles, you know, and, and uh, you know, those type of missile defense systems. So I guess they accomplished their goals showing uh, Israel what they could do. And, of course, a few hundred of these drones and missiles are, are you know, minor in terms of the kind of arsenal that Hezbollah has and Iran has. So kind of a shot across the bow of Israel, making them expend, you know, extremely expensive weapons. And then Israel, I, I think the best description I had uh, I read today was a de-escalatory retaliation showing Iran what it can do, how it can penetrate its air defense uh, towards some very uh, delicate sites but without causing much damage or, or any, any casualties. So it's very bizarre from that standpoint. Shift over to Ukraine. You know, my, my problem for at least the last year in Ukraine is that, you know, we're not recognizing the reality that Vladimir Putin will not lose this war. Uh, he has four times the population, uh, at least four times the ability to produce the 155 millimeter shells at a tenth of the price. Um, Losing is, is existential for, to Vladimir Putin. They also have theater nuclear weapons. So we need to be very careful with Ukraine. We, our strategy toward Ukraine ought to be doing everything we can to bring Putin to the negotiating table and end this bloody stalemate. But the Biden administration, now we know, uh, pretty well scuttled the Istanbul uh, negotiations uh, shortly after the start of this war. So, uh, you know, I, I, again, I. I'm concerned about the Ukrainian people. I don't want to use them as cannon fodder in a proxy war between the U.S., the West, and Russia. And I think that's what this is degraded into. Well, I spoke yesterday with the president of Poland, and President Duda is in town trying to uh, make the case for aid to Ukraine. Here is the president with me yesterday on the idea that this should be a loan and not an out-and-out -out more money, free money, for Ukraine. Watch. What is your reaction to something that President Trump has been talking about in terms of aid to Ukraine being a loan? The president has said many times that, yes, he agrees money should go to Ukraine, but it should be a loan to be paid back. Well, of course, uh, to a large extent, this is uh, an issue of domestic uh, policy, which is being implemented by the United States. I'm convinced that Ukraine will be able not to only to thank for every kind of help, but also repay any kind of loan if there is such a loan granted. But this support is indispensable for Ukraine. Is that the thinking, Senator? A loan? Well, first of all, the loan can be forgiven, you know, almost overnight. That's right. Uh, and our European partners, of course, would like to have American taxpayers foot the bill in Ukraine. Every dollar we send is a dollar they don't have to send to, to send to defend their own territory. So the fact of the matter is, is I don't feel much support here in the U.S., certainly not for my constituents, as, as concerned as they are about Ukrainian people. And by the way, I am as well. That's why I don't want them used as cannon fodder. I don't want to see their country destroyed any further. I want this war to end. But uh, Europe's got to understand that uh, the support from American citizens for spending more and more dollars, you know, billions, tens of billions of dollars more to Ukraine is waning, and they better pick up, uh, uh, the, you know, the slack from that, but also do everything they can to bring this war to an end. Yeah, that's, that's not happening. And now we're worried that this actually could spill into the United States. How worried are you about a terrorist attack on U.S. soil right now? Well, so I've been saying that the open border is a clear and present danger to this nation for, you know, ever since Biden got into office and opened up the border. You know, we've averaged over 7,800 people per day being encountered at the border since Biden took office. Obama said 2,200 days was a humanitarian crisis. You know, what, what is four times that? So, no, this is obviously a concern. It's, it's certainly been at the back of my mind that maybe that is why President Biden has been coddling Iran to the extent that he has, because he's also concerned about potential uh, assets, of, you know, Iranian assets in here, sleeper cells from ISIS or, or you know, Iran surrogates. Uh, we, we have to be concerned about that. The FBI director certainly is. Uh, we, we are at the highest threat level since 9-11 uh, because of Joe Biden and the Democrats. The Democrats yeah. in Congress, their open border policy. Let, let me just say that we're now getting propaganda from Iran. Iran's state media is reporting that the attempted Israeli drone attack, quote unquote, failed. So this propaganda coming from Iran right now, uh, this morning, uh, we've got new Fox News polls as well. They show Trump and Biden are tied in a head to head matchup in Wisconsin, Senator. What's your feeling about your constituents here in terms of how they're feeling about the upcoming election with all of this in the backdrop? 
Well, again, it always amazes me that anybody can support Joe Biden. When, when you take a look at the, the path that uh, Biden has put this nation on, the open borders, the 40-year high inflation, uh, you know, the war on fossil fuel, again, the fecklessness that uh, in foreign policy, you know, all, all this weakness of America's in emboldening our enemies, uh, the world's in flames. How could anybody support Biden? But uh, Wisconsin's a very divided uh, state. We've got pockets of, of very liberal individuals in, in Madison, Milwaukee. It's a lot easier for Democrats to, to extract votes out of those limited geographic regions. Republicans have to get votes from all of the states. It's a much more difficult task. So it depends on the ground game. And I, I hope uh, the candidates, uh, Eric Hovde running for U.S. Senate, and President Trump, the, the statewide candidates, uh, get that ground game up and running. I'm doing everything I can to, to make sure that uh, we get those 10 electoral votes for President Trump, not for Biden. Well, I mean, look, leadership in the Republican Party is being questioned. You've got fights over Mike Johnson in the House. And, of course, we know Mitch McConnell is stepping down uh, as the leader in November. Who do you want to see in that role in the Senate? Well, again, I'm trying to lead a process for us to develop a, a mission statement uh, so that we understand uh, Republicans in the U.S. Senate, you know, what do we stand for? What are we willing to fight for? You know, what, what is at stake? From my standpoint, I think our primary mission needs to be to counter the ideology and policies of the radical left that are destroying this country. I think it's pretty simple what we need to do. I don't think we've done an effective job. Obviously, the, the secret negotiations on the border were a debacle. I mean, that, was, that was monumental uh, political malpractice. And it's coming, it's coming home to roost right now. I mean, you, you saw Chuck Schumer give a, a quote to Politico saying they're in a lot better shape on the border than they were three weeks ago. Uh, once those uh, disastrous border negotiations, negotiations ended. So, again, that, that just signals the Democrats, they weren't looking to secure the border. They were looking for political cover. They got it. That's why he's saying once those border negotiations failed, he was, he was happy as a clam. Uh, he, he was politically better off without that deal so they could just blame Republicans uh, for the open border when they're the ones that want it, they're the ones that caused it. Yeah. All politics uh, while our national security is in question. Unbelievable. Senator, thank you. We'll be watching your work. Have a good day. Senator Ron Johnson in Wisconsin.